China's rich history spans over 4,000 years, and our journey begins into 21 BC with the founding of the Qin Dynasty, a pivotal moment that shaped the nation's future. After conquering six rival states, the Qin Dynasty emerged as the first to unify China under a centralized imperial rule, bringing an end to the Warring States period. Under the reign of Qin Shi Huang, China's first emperor, monumental achievements were made that would shape the nation for over 2,000 years. One of the most significant was the standardization effort, which introduced uniform weights, measures, coinage, and script across the empire. While this era is also remembered for the harsh acts of burning books and persecuting scholars who refused to adopt the new standardized script, these measures had a profound and lasting impact. By enforcing unity in language and systems, Qin Shi Huang laid the foundation for a cohesive Chinese identity. Unlike regions like India, which have multiple states and territories with diverse cultures, China emerged as a civilization state a singular cultural entity rather than a country of divided regions. Second, the construction of the Great Wall. One of Qin's most iconic achievements was the beginning of the Great Wall, built to defend against nomadic invasions from the north. While it may seem unnecessary in today's context, at the time it was crucial for safeguarding China's northern frontier without the need to station massive armies along the border. The wall's watchtowers were equipped with a highly effective smoke signal system, allowing for rapid communication across vast distances. In an era without modern technology, this was one of the most efficient methods of relaying urgent messages, making the Great Wall not just a physical barrier, but also a sophisticated communication network. Third, the centralized imperial system. Perhaps the most transformative reform introduced by the Qin dynasty was the establishment of the centralized imperial system. Prior to Qin's unification, China was a patchwork of warring states, each with its own rulers, laws, and governance. Qin Shi Huang ended this fragmentation by creating a system where all power flowed directly from the emperor. To enforce this, Qin abolished the feudal system where local lords held semi-independent power. Instead, the empire was divided into administrative units, commanderies and counties with governors and officials appointed by the central government, not through hereditary rule. Their loyalty was to the emperor, ensuring tight control over the entire empire. This system allowed for more efficient governance, uniform law enforcement, and direct taxation. It became the foundation for the imperial structure that future dynasties would follow. Even though Qin's reign lasted only 14 years, the centralized imperial system defined China's governance for centuries and its influence can still be seen in China's modern government today. This reform didn't just unify China's administration. It reinforced the emperor's supreme authority. All power and governance were concentrated at the central court, allowing the vast empire to be managed effectively and maintaining internal stability. It was a system that future dynasties would build upon, making Qin's short rule one of the most impactful in Chinese history. The downside of this centralized system, of course, is the risk when there are bad emperors. The rise and fall of many dynasties can often be traced back to poor decisions made by the emperor, leading to instability and eventual collapse. However, even in modern democratic systems, similar issues persist. Just take a look at recent elections in the United States. It raises the question, do people truly have the means to consistently choose capable leaders? The challenges of governance, whether through an emperor or an elected official, seem to share this common struggle across time. The Han Dynasty, established in 206 BC, lasted for over 400 years and is considered one of China's golden ages. One of its most significant achievements was the creation of the Silk Road trade routes, which connected China to the West and facilitated cultural, economic, and technological exchanges. The modern Belt and Road Initiative draws inspiration from this ancient network. Another key aspect of Han rule was the adoption of Confucianism as the state philosophy. This deeply influenced Chinese governance and culture, 
shaping societal values for centuries. Even today, over 90% of the Chinese population is classified as Han, a testament to the lasting impact of this dynasty. The Han period also saw the invention of paper, a revolutionary material that transformed writing, communication, and record-keeping, setting the stage for global advancements in knowledge sharing. After the fall of the Han Dynasty, China experienced over 400 years of fragmentation and division marked by the rise and fall of several kingdoms and dynasties, including the Three Kingdoms, Jin Dynasty, Southern and Northern Dynasties, and the Suai Dynasty. Despite the political instability, this period saw significant cultural development and agricultural advancements, with one of the most notable changes being the spread of Buddhism across China. Rather than delve into each of these periods, we'll skip ahead to China's Golden Age, the Tang Dynasty, which lasted nearly 300 years and ushered in an era of unprecedented cultural and economic prosperity. Oh, before I forget, there's another crucial aspect to mention, the imperial examination system. Introduced during the Suai dynasty and fully developed under the Tang dynasty, this system revolutionized how government officials were selected. Unlike previous practices where appointments were based on noble birth or political connections, the exams were designed to choose officials based on merit. The imperial examination system was a rigorous process testing candidates on their knowledge of Confucian classics, poetry, and essays on statcraft. The exams were conducted at multiple levels, local, provincial, and imperial, requiring candidates to succeed at each stage to advance. This system profoundly impacted Chinese culture by emphasizing education and scholarly achievement, fostering a scholarly elite dedicated to literary and philosophical learning. However, despite its many successes, the system was eventually abolished after nearly 1,500 years during the Qing dynasty. While it had a remarkable influence on Chinese society, its lack of focus on science and technology contributed to challenges in modernizing China. Now, let's shift our focus back to the Tang Dynasty, a period often hailed as a golden age of Chinese culture. The Tang Dynasty, which reigned from 618 to 907 AD, was a time of extraordinary cultural flourishing and innovation. It was renowned for its advancements in poetry, painting, and technology. Among its notable contributions were the invention of woodblock printing and significant progress in astronomy and medicine. The intricate frontispiece of the Diamond Sutra, produced during the Tang Dynasty in China, represents the world's earliest printed text with a recorded production date, 868 AD. During this era, the Tang Dynasty was not only a beacon of cultural brilliance, but also one of the most powerful and influential empires in the world. Its expansive reach extended far beyond its borders, impacting neighboring regions and leaving a profound cultural legacy. The influences of the Tang Dynasty can even be seen today in countries like Japan, reflecting its lasting impact. The Tang Dynasty's era of prosperity and expansion helped shape not only Chinese history but also the cultural and political landscape of East Asia. Next, let's move on to the next dynasty, Song Dynasty, which spanned over 300 years from 960 to 1279 AD. This period was marked by remarkable economic prosperity, with the Song being one of the first civilizations to adopt paper money, revolutionizing trade and commerce. In terms of scientific discoveries, the Song dynasty saw the invention of gunpowder and the compass, alongside significant advancements in engineering and navigation, which played crucial roles in shaping China's future. Culturally, it was a time of flourishing art, literature, and philosophy, with the rise of Neo-Confucianism shaping the intellectual landscape of China for centuries to come. After Song Dynasty, it was the Yuan Dynasty from 1271 to 1368, founded by the Mongol leader Kublai Khan, a grandson of the famous Genghis Khan. This dynasty marked the first time that China was fully under foreign rule, bringing significant changes to the empire. 
Under the Mongol rule, the empire expanded dramatically, becoming part of the larger Mongol empire that stretched across Asia and into parts of Europe. This vast empire facilitated cultural exchanges between East and West, creating a bridge for trade, technology, and ideas. Chinese technologies like printing and gunpowder began to reach Europe during this time, while Central Asian and Middle Eastern influences made their way into China. But the Mongol expansion wasn't just about trade. The Yuan dynasty's aggressive military campaigns in Europe were part of the larger Mongol wars, with Mongol armies reaching as far as Poland and Hungary. These campaigns spread fear throughout Europe, sparking the myth of the Yellow Peril. One of the most famous stories from this period comes from Marco Polo, the Venetian merchant who traveled to the court of Kublai Khan. His journeys, recorded in the travels of Marco Polo, introduced the splendor and sophistication of Yuan China to Europe, inspiring generations of explorers like Columbus to seek a sea route to the east. Now, let's move on to the Ming Dynasty from 1368 to 1644 AD, another significant empire in Chinese history which lasted for nearly 300 years. This is a period known for restoring Han Chinese rule and notable achievements in architecture, exploration, and culture. The Ming rulers focused on restoring the Great Wall, creating the iconic sections we recognize today, and building the Forbidden City in Beijing, a symbol of imperial power and grandeur. During the early Ming period, Admiral Zheng He led seven major naval expeditions across the Indian Ocean, reaching as far as East Africa. These voyages showcased China's power and promoted trade, but unlike European colonizers, the goal wasn't conquest. After these voyages, China shifted to isolationism, focusing on internal stability. The Ming Dynasty was also a golden age for art, with the famous blue and white porcelain and influential literature such as Journey to the West. Advances in woodblock printing helped spread knowledge more widely. Finally, we arrive at the Qing Dynasty 1644 to 1912 AD, the last imperial dynasty of China. It was a period marked by both great territorial expansion and a tragic decline. Often remembered in China as the century of humiliation, this era left a profound imprint on the nation's collective memory as foreign invasions, internal unrest, and the failure to modernize exposed China to a series of humiliations that would reshape its future. The Qing dynasty was founded by the Manchus, a Nonghan ethnic group from the north who successfully seized control after the fall of the Ming. Despite their foreign origins, they adopted many Chinese customs and effectively ruled a multi-ethnic empire. Now we enter the era of the Republic of China, established in 1912 after the fall of the Qing dynasty. This was a time of political turbulence and social transformation as China struggled to modernize and break free from centuries of imperial rule. Sun Yat-sen, the founding father of the republic, envisioned a new, democratic China. However, internal divisions, warlordism, and foreign intervention, especially during the Second Sino-Japanese War, made this dream difficult to realize. After Japan's surrender in 1945, China was plunged into a civil war between the nationalists and the communists. This conflict ultimately led to the collapse of the Republic of China government on the mainland and its retreat to Taiwan. In 1949, the communists, led by Mao Zedong, established the People's Republic of China, marking the start of a new era that continues to this day. In my opinion, the People's Republic of China is likely to develop into another golden age in Chinese history. Over the past 40 years, China has achieved remarkable feats in economic growth, poverty alleviation, industrialization, and advancements in engineering and high technology. Its rapid GDP growth and transformation into a global powerhouse have been nothing short of stunning. On my channel, you'll find many intriguing videos showcasing detailed data from these fields over the past 40 years. If you're interested, be sure to check them out. This is part one of my video comparing the history of United States and China. In the next video, I'll delve into U.S. history.
Thank you for watching. Feel free to leave your comments below.